All right, here we go, everyone, on lesson three, language systems. So we are, again, you have some reading buddy questions that I hope want you to discuss on Thursday. So what you're going to do is discuss with your partner what are the four main language systems, what is new that you didn't know about each part before, and then just how many phonemes and book, sand, and tight. So uh, hopefully by the end of the lesson today, you'll have a sense of what is happening there. So basically, to understand language development, we need to know the terminology used when discussing language development. And this will be, these will be terms that you will need to know as a literacy teacher. And I, I think you've heard me use this term before, that you need to be able to party talk these terms. So when you go to a party, and they say, whoa, my kids, their phonemic awareness is unbelievable. They have such a great sense of their, of their phonemes and their graphemes and their morphemes. You weren't sitting there going, huh? You actually know what they're talking about. So th these terms you will hear this year, you'll hear in your 3103 class, and you will hear out in the practicum uh, and, your, and your first years of teaching. So just get these, these terms under your belt right away. So basically, the big language systems that you need to have an idea of what they are are semantics, semantics, sorry, syntax, phonology, and pragmatics. And together, all these systems make communication possible as we read, write, listen, talk, represent, and view. Remember, there's our there's our definition. Oops, there's our definition of literacy. Okay, so we're just gonna go through these. Basically, semantics is your vocabulary and how it develops in, in children is it develops from particular meanings to more abstract meanings. So basically it goes from a child knowing that that's a cookie to a child knowing that that's a cookie that's made with oatmeal and raisins and that they don't like that. Right, so it develops their vocabulary, then changes as they go through, as they go through, and they, they start to think more abstractly. Advanced understanding of vocabulary comes when comprehension of prefixes, so before the word, suffixes at the end, synonyms, again, synonyms, I'm, I'm just gonna read this definition, a word or phrase that means exactly or nearly the same as another word or phrase in the same language, for example, shut, is a synonym of close, so something that's very close in the in the meaning. We have homonyms, that is like pitcher of water and a pitcher in baseball, where it's spelt the same but has different meanings. And antonyms are the opposite, so you have bad and good. So think about how much vocabulary you would have to have to start to understand homonyms that you would be able to say yeah it's spelt exactly the same but a pitcher of water and a pitcher in baseball is quite different meaning so here's a little I don't know if you can see this I'll move myself up here maybe Ooh, there we go uh, Michelle says well when I have children I hope they don't get any of your genes and Katie says no nope. and they probably won't get any of my sneakers either <laughs> right so you have to know genes g-e-n-e-s and genes j-e-a-n-s right in order to get that joke so that's semantics here it just oh i'm gonna move myself back down here uh the real understanding of vocabulary comes when when you start to comprehend the nuance of language often if you have uh if you have a friend who is an ell or a cld learner and you say something and they just look at you with a very strange look on their face, that's because you've probably used something that is very nuanced, specifically about the language that you understand that is not directly um, the meaning or in context, those kind of things. So here's just a little, here's a little uh, comic for you. Teacher says, if I have 12 tomatoes and take away two, what is the difference? Our little guy says, exactly, I don't like tomatoes either. And as he's going to the office, his buddy asks him, what are you in for this time? And the guy says, semantics. 
because the teacher, what is the difference? As in, what is the difference in math? And he's like, yeah, what's the difference? I don't like tomatoes. So again, those are the nuances of language. And here, Watson, it's the night before Christmas. So tell me, why is that creature stirring? What do you have to know? The night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. So you have to know that Christmas story that we just kind of know culturally, but it's not, again, a universal uh, a universal story, uh, nor is it universally that particular story known. So those are, that's what we talk, when we talk about semantics, we talk about our, the vocab. Okay, on to syntax. Syntax is the way language is actually organized. So words and sentences are the English language building blocks. So the dog bit the man is not the same as the man bit the dog. So the actual order of the words, even though I used all the same words, the order of the words actually matters. And um, so much communication, I think, happens when we don't have, obviously, our words in the right order, especially when we're doing voice to text and it moves things around and it adds some interesting words in, right? So the words and sentences are the English language building blocks and the order of the words in a sentence matter. So uh, here's again some, some uh, just some fun cartoons. Your daughter said I was a lousy English teacher. How dare her? And this one's one of my favorites. Foundation for the syntactically challenged. We're in open come. <laughs> so obviously the words are not in the right order and the meaning then is changed. Okay, the third sort of foundation of language system that you need to know is phonology. Phonology is kind of the overall umbrella term and we're going to look at lots of terms underneath it but basically it's the study of the sounds of language. It's the sounds that you are hearing right now, it's the sounds of language. The study of the patterns of the sound that create meaning in language. So we're talking about the particular sounds here. Okay, so let's go on to phonology terms. So we have phoneme. This is the smallest unit of sound, the smallest units of sounds in language. We have 45 to 52 different phonemes. So you can see it's not linked to the alphabet, but we have these different sounds. Um, we have these different sounds in the English language. And this is, uh, I would suggest right now that you stop the video and you go to this PDF and you look at all of these different phonemes. As a teacher of any level of literacy, you need to know these 45 or so different phonemes. Um, so go through, I would actually say them all out loud. There's nobody watching, just say them all out loud. Go b, ball, b, ball, right? K, cat. Um, those kind of things so that you get an idea of what these phonemes are. So go there right now. I'm going to keep going, uh, but let's pause the video and go there and have some fun. Okay. Phonological awareness is a, a global, this is sort of a global term, a global awareness and ability to ma manipulate the sound structures of speech. This isn't particularly uh, linked to English language, but it's a global, it's every child has this particular ability and this particular awareness to be able to decipher the particular sounds. Phonemic, whoa, whoa, come back here. That's not what I want to do. Okay, phonemic awareness is basically a child's awareness of the individual phonemes so that they actually understand that all of these, all of these words that I'm saying actually have individual sounds. And it sounds so basic to us as adults readers and writers but if you have a five-year-old who's in kindergarten and they don't have the concept that words are made up of different sounds it's brutal it's brutal and we have to catch them at that point so a child's ability to manip the uh, phonemic, phonemic awareness is a child's ability to manipulate these sounds so they have so something like they have to be able to change the first letter of cat to make a flying animal which would be so let's go on. 
Morphology is the study of the structure of words and how morphemes combine to create new meaning. And a morpheme is the smallest unit of language. It can be a whole word or part of a word such as a prefix or a suffix. So for example, the word ungrateful contains three morphemes. So now we're starting to about combining these together. Ungrate and full. Need to go now all contain only one morpheme because you can't split them up. So again, here's a little cartoon, re-undo. Hey, they, here, here they come again. These guys always try to start something because <laughs> they're prefixes. I always try to start something. Okay, so phonology terms, again, this is now we're going into actually linking these sounds to these weird picture kind of letters that we have. These letters make so much sense to us, but really they're, they're just, they're representations of all of these sounds. They're arbitrary representations of these sounds that I am making right now. So you have to think that these are pictures of the sounds. So graphophonemic awareness is the relationship now between printed letters and phonemes and sounds. Phonemic awareness is just all about the sound. It's not linked at all to printed letters. And a grapheme is a letter or letter combination that spells a single phoneme. So example, the k sound can be spelled with a C, a K, or a CK. And so now we're talking, starting to talk about how can these sounds be actually represented with letters? Okay, so I want you to look at English is a crazy language. So we have a long, and this is on your, your, uh, the PDF that hopefully you went through. So the long vowels, long A as in snail, look at all the ways that we can, oops, that we can spell the long A sound. Baby, way, straight, hay, croquet, vein, Gage, cake, break, they. No wonder kids are confused. No wonder kids are confused. It's all the same sound, but we have we have here ten different ways to spell it. So it's kind of graphophonemic craziness. Okay, I'm gonna leave that with you. So uh, I'm, I want you to go through this video on your own. It's really a fun video. Start at 20 seconds, stop whenever you want. If you wanna read along with this particular poem about how crazy uh, phonemes and graphemes are in English, just have a go. That's a, it's a really fun one. So stop, go to that, and then we'll finish up here. Okay, phonics is a form of instruction. Phonics isn't, um, Phonics is a form of instruction to cultivate the understanding and use of the alphabetic principle that there is a predictable relationship between the phonemes and graphemes, the letters that represent these sounds in written language, and that this information can be used to read or decode words. So phonics sometimes gets looped into phonemic awareness or phonemes. Phonics is a form of instruction, and that's the, the, that is the definition that I'm going to use for this course. So when you're talking about the sounds, get used to talking about phonemes and phonemic awareness. Okay, the third one linked under our big umbrella of language systems is the way is pragmatics. And basically pragmatics is the way that we speak, uh, sorry, the way, the way that we speak or write is dependent on our audience and purpose. So we hopefully will speak differently to a child than we speak to the dean. And if I was to say, yo, that was so lit, man, that would just be wrong, right? That would just be wrong. Um, so how my audience and my purpose and who I am, that, that's the pragmatic part of that it's that how we speak is dependent on our audience and purpose. And I would ask you to, again, stop this video and watch this YouTube link. It's George Strombolopoulos and an actor, Alan Halko, and he talks about um, the, his dialect from Newfoundland. And it's super funny. Okay, the final one is communicative, communicative competence. And the reason why we, do, we talk about all of these uh, language systems is 
is we want the ability to appropriately combine and use all aspects of language, including nonverbal. So again, I would get you to watch this video on your own, and I'm going to run out of time. Goodbye.